It still blows my mind that Adobe keeps this awesome feature hidden away in such a dark and dusty corner of Photoshop. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the hidden Photoshop hack that unlocks an easy way to make your photos pop. And I'll show you the exact steps to start using it right now for amazing results in your landscape photos. First, it's important to understand why this hidden technique helps you make your photos pop because many photographers edit their landscapes to make everything burst with color and contrast all over the entire frame. But the problem is that when everything stands out, nothing stands out. To overcome that, there are some fundamental rules that you can follow that I first discovered when studying how famous painters inject a feeling of depth into their paintings. So take a look at the difference in contrast, saturation and lightness between the foreground and background in this painting. Think about what it is that makes the far away stuff look far away compared to the things in the foreground. Now I'll explain what these rules of light, color and contrast are next so that when you start to use these same rules in your editing in Photoshop, you can inject the same sense of depth into your photos too. But first, let me show you how this hidden Photoshop technique makes it easy to apply these rules to your photos. First, if you haven't installed the depth blur neural filter, then you'll have to do that from inside Photoshop by clicking on this little icon here and waiting for Photoshop to do its thing. Now, when you run the depth blur neural filter, check this little box down here that says output depth map only. Select new layer in this drop down, and then hit okay. And then what you'll end up with is a new layer with this weird black and white looking image. So that's step one. For step two, we need an adjustment layer or a layer that has a mask on it. So let's use a curves adjustment layer for this example. Next, we're gonna select the entire canvas with Command or Control A, click on the black and white layer, and then press Command or Control C to copy, and then Alt or Option click on the layer mask attached to your curves adjustment. And then finally paste with Command or Control V. So now we have the depth map from the neural filter loaded into the curves adjustment layer mask, which means that what we effectively have is a depth mask, or in other words, a layer mask that makes this adjustment go more into the background than the foreground, or vice versa, as you'll see in a minute. Now the important thing is that this gives you a different result than if you'd manually brushed into the layer mask or used the luminosity mask to restrict the adjustment because this time Photoshop's AI has actually worked out the actual distance of things from the camera and built the mask based on that. So when I move the curve up and down now, you can see that the background is being affected a lot more than the foreground in the image. So if you want the mask to do the opposite so that the curves affects the foreground more than the background, then click on the layer mask and invert it with Command or Control I on the keyboard. Now this is a lot of steps to reproduce all the time, every time, so I've created an action that does the bulk of the work for you, which you can download for free in the link in the description and pin comment. Now with this new ability to create depth masks, you can easily make adjustments to distant elements more or less than closer elements and vice versa. And this is important because these rules all revolve around how light, color and contrast are portrayed depending on the distance of things in a scene. For example, if you have two identical things and one is right in front of the camera and one is a mile away in the distance, the one in the distance will actually be lighter, lower contrast and less saturated due to the amount of atmosphere or literally air between the camera and these things. So taking this as a general rule, you can apply it easily to an entire scene by making the foreground relatively darker, more saturated and higher contrast than the stuff in the distance by using depth masks to control where these kinds of adjustments are applied. And you can see from this example how using those ideas can turn an otherwise flat looking edit into something way more dynamic and 3D looking. Now the thing is, depth masks are an amazing tool to have in your back pocket, but there's another editing technique that's so powerful it literally changed my life. Watch this video next to learn what it is and how to use it.